Welcome back to Golf Simulator Videos. Today I've got a really cool video for you because I've had a lot of people reaching out talking about the putting analysis with GC Quad. Now I did an initial video where I had my well putt mat laid out and we put the GC Quad over to the side. We were using our FSX performance fitting software on our iPad and showed you guys how you can get a full putting analysis. All right, but since then I've had a lot of people ask, well, what else can you do with it? Well, one, you can take it outside. You don't have to use it inside on a well putt mat like I showed you in that video, and I'll put that link to the video down in the description so you can check that out too if you haven't seen it. But you can also use it inside your simulator with FSX 2020. All right, so uh, this is something I think a lot of people were, you know, saying this is this is kind of what I have available. Does this work? And they want to know if it has the capabilities. Well, guess what? You have full putting analysis inside of FSX 2020, and I'm going to show you how I've been using it today to really work on my putting and to focus on club data. Which, if you listen to most most PGA professionals, they're going to tell you that club data and that face angle. Uh, really is what you need to work on along with your impact position of the ball. Now before we get started, let's just go ahead and show you how it's measuring that data. If we look at a putter face, all right, now I have three fiducial reflective stickers, all right, these are fiducials, also known as just reflective stickers. It basically allows the quad to measure the club, all right, and that's where it's getting the data. You can see there's one towards the heel, all right, and I'll just kind of point that there, and then two towards the toe. All right, my camera always wants to focus on the back. Um, and I use the reference points on the, uh, the, you know, the putter face, the club face, uh, to place those nice and evenly. Now, the one towards the heel is dead center, and then the two towards the toe, all right, those are also evenly spaced. I just kind of use the, the pattern on the, the putter to do that, and it's really simple to do. All right, so that's how it's getting these precise measurements that I'm going to show you today. So let's go ahead and jump into FSX 2020. Then I'm going to show you where I go to work on my putting. So I go into improve. I go to the foresight range. All right, you can set your settings however you'd like them. You could adjust the, the green speed to match your turf inside your studio. Um, I feel like where I have mine there is pretty darn close to my studio. It rolls about a 9 or a 10. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And it takes you out to the range to a defaulted driver. That's where it always starts you, 374 yards to the green. And then what you want to do is go to your little mini map in the upper right, okay? And you're just going to go ahead and just right click on that green. And it, you can see it even went into putting mode automatically because now we're on a green. Now you're just going to want to set that distance up however far away you want. I'm thinking that, uh, you know, we're going to want like a 10, 10 or 12 foot putt or so. So I'm just going to kind of go right here. Um, perfect. 10 feet, 6 inches. And I can show you with the grid real quick, we're putting on a flat surface. No movement. Nice neutral environment to work on your putting. All right. I think that, uh, you know, for me, that's what I like. All right. And so now let's just go ahead and hit a putt to start. All right. So 10 feet, 6 inches. I'm going to show you the club data that I'm focusing on. Not a bad putt. And look at that. We made our first putt right down the middle. Let's see why it rolled so straight. Okay. So it, it does about a seven second review according to my settings. You can set it up for 10 seconds. You can set it to not show it at all. But it also has these nice ribbons. You can see over on uh, the left hand side, you have all your ball data and then you have all of your club data. Okay. So we're not going to focus on ball data because everybody's environment is different. When the ball is rolling on turf, just so you understand, it has some bounce to it. And uh, golf simulator software, actually, uh, every single one I know of is only reading ball speed and the ball direction. OK, because it understands that all these environments are different. It can't take launch and, you know, bounce and all those different factors into play because you wouldn't have accurate putting. So it's worried about ball speed and then that launch direction. OK, but the club data is where you want to focus because you can apply it in any situation. That club data is going to be the same if you're working on your stroke, whether you're outside, inside, or anywhere. And that's how you're going to get these results that you want. So let's go ahead and go back into that review of the club data really quick. All right, you can see all the ball data, obviously. Go into club. And let's take down my swing camera so you guys can see everything. There we go. All right, and let's just go quadrant to quadrant really quick. All right, so I made that putt. Um, now, if you look in the upper left, my path was out to in 1.4 degrees. All right, my face was closed 0.2 
to the target. So the correlation of that path and face, and if you listen to most PGA instructors, they're really focused on the face angle. They're not that worried about anything else as much as they are the face angle. It sounds like that's the first data point you want to work on is getting your face straight at impact. And you can see how the side angle of that ball was only 0.2 to the left. All right, so let's move down to the lower right quadrant and talk about ball impact. Now, if you look, my vertical impact was at zero. I mean, I nailed that sucker right in the middle and I was only negative one millimeter towards the toe. So because I had such a nice impact and my face was nearly perfectly square, that ball rolled straight. Now there's also another data point that I've been working on with my PGA professional and he thinks that this is a lot to do with my carry distance and that's that lower left quadrant. You can see how I'm hitting slightly down on the ball. He wants me to get hitting up on the ball, even if it's more level, but not down on the ball. And so that's something I've been working on. So let's go ahead and close that out and we can put our swing camera back up so you guys can see and we'll hit another putt. This time, oh, I'm sorry, I'm putting my logo up and not, uh, not the camera. There we go. We don't need the logo up there. All right, so let's try to focus. He's been giving me a couple tips. He wants me to bring the ball a little more forward in my stance with a little more wrist action. And let's see if I can get this a little more up instead of hitting down on the ball. Hit that one a little more firm. Oh, and sure enough, I hit it so firm that it uh, bounced off the back of the cup. But let's see if I corrected what I was looking at, all right? So let me go ahead and I'll take the swing camera down again so you guys can see everything that's going on here. And this is, this is what I love. I mean, FSX 2020 um, allows you to take this club data, have it in your full simulation in your studio, and check it out. I'm 0.7 uh, out to in path. I'm 0.7 face closed, and that ball only rolled 0.1 left. All right, now my face was a little more closed than I'd like to be. I'd like to get it nice and square, but the path to face ratio worked together there, and I was only 0.1 offline. So check it out. Now I'm 0.1 upwards instead of hitting down on the ball. It had a nice smooth roll. You could see that ball had more speed on it that time. The ball speed was 7.6, and you can see it does give you club head speed, 4.5. All right. Um, and then you can even see that there's a little bit of a launch angle on that ball. Um, now that's not something I really pay attention to. Like I said, if you listen to all the PGA professionals out there, they're going to tell you to focus on your club data and impact position. Now I was 2 millimeters high that time on the face. But my horizontal impact, once again, was right dead center, and that ball rolled straight. All right, now if I would have had just a little less speed, I, I mean, that ball rolled really smooth. Uh, let's try to hit one more, see what kind of results we can get. Now, if you guys have been watching it all, um, my putting is, I mean, it's probably one of my struggles, um, other than my driver that I have a difficult time with. Um, I'm working on that, let me tell you. Um, and putting is very important. Everybody knows that. And so if you can get down here and you can work on this club head data uh, with, with real-time results, and uh, I mean, if you consult with a PGA professional, get a lesson, and understand what they want you working on, you can come down here and you can also go into the table and export the results to them. And I'll show you that table in just a second. So let's go ahead and try to hit one more putt here. Once again, I'm going to bring that ball just a little forward in my stance. I'm going to try to get that wrist action he's telling me about. 10 feet, 6 inches. I'm going to try to slow this down a little bit. That was a nice roll. There we go. All right. So let's see if I actually accomplished. Okay, I was 0.7 down. Um, and my impact position wasn't perfect that time. 2 millimeters, and I'll take the camera down so you guys can see it. Um, so let's take that camera down real quick. And you actually, you know, I don't even need to, um, but I like showing the visual, but notice the ribbons off to the left. You've got all your ball data on one and then all the club data on the other. Like I said, when the ball's not rolling perfect, it does not put out data that it can't read perfectly. So, for instance, um, you know, you can see like carry distance, uh, you know, things like that, or, or the RPM spin of the ball. Um, you know, it's not going to spit out data if it's not perfectly measuring it. Um, so just understand that we're really focused on ball data here. I'm sorry, club data here, you know, because in the simulation environments, all that matters is ball speed and direction. So let's pull up the club data. All right. There we go. 
All right, so we have one degree out to in, and my face was 0.4 open. Um, so, you know, a little different ratio that time, but I'm keeping that face pretty square, and it's causing that ball to roll nice and straight, which is nice. Now it's 0.7 down. Not as bad as we started, not as good as the last one. And if you look at my impact position, I was 2 millimeters high, and I was 4 millimeters towards the heel that time. So I got away with a decent roll there, but I still have some work to do. So let's say I wanted to send these results over to my professional. I could actually hit table, okay, and then from here I can just go to export and it will actually export that to a file. You can create a custom report, you can email it off, you can print it or save it as a CSV or a PDF and get that off to your PGA professional and let them look at the data. All right, so um, I just think that is is really really cool that they allow for that. Um, you know, I know that that's something that uh, you know a lot of people could use. And you know, if you go to the club data, you'll see what he's going to look at. You know, he or she. Um, you know, they're going to look at your uh, angle of attack. They're going to look at your path and your face to target. They're going to look at that uh, you know lie um, and then impact position. Okay, all of it's right there for them to look at. They can even see the standard deviation between all the shots right down in the bottom. Okay, that uh, that row on the bottom, you can see that there, and your average, all right, is all there. So um, really, really cool stuff. Now, this is all happening inside of FSX 2020 software. Um, I hope that this has given you guys a real clear understanding of, you know, what you can do inside of a simulator environment with putting and club data, all right, with the Foresight Sports GC Quad. Uh, something that I really enjoy. Um, I've been using it a lot and uh, working on that, that 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 face, working on that impact position. Those are the two things that, you know, consulting with my PGA professional that I really need to work on. And it's amazing how he can give me, you know, some setup guidance and just take one lesson and then you can come down here and, you know, work on it. You know, you don't want to start experimenting with things you don't know what you're doing. Um, you know, stay, stay consulting with them, share the data with them, you know, use those export capabilities and, uh, uh, it's really amazing how you can work on your game, you know, with the tools and the technology that are available. So I hope this answered a lot of questions uh, for the people that have been reaching out, asking if you can, you know, use this putting analysis inside a simulator environment. And just understand, if you're looking for ball data and you want that precise measurement and roll, I recommend you either get a really nice putting mat, okay, so you're getting that true roll of the ball, or you take the quad outside, you put it on the green outside, because just understand, a lot of this rough turf is just not going to give you a ball roll. But like I said, if you talk to most PGA professionals, they're all going to tell you, don't look at the ball data. You're going to focus on the club data. That's where you're going to get the results in putting. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, please subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Comment below. Let me know what you think, and we'll talk to you soon.